Good morning, Harmony. How's everybody this morning? Hey, don't forget, clocks get turned back next Sunday. So if you come up, if you show up for the uh, 10 a.m. Uh, service and it's 9 o'clock, don't be surprised if we shuffle you off to an adult Sunday school room someplace. Hey, that might be a, that might be a way of getting more people into Sunday school. I'll have to think about that. Okay. Uh, a couple of announcements for you. There's choir practice at 6 o'clock on Monday nights, and there's the cantata rehearsal that begins at 6.30. So uh, if you'd like to sing in either one of those, it's 6 o'clock for choir. It's 6.30 for the cantata. Don't forget, on Thursdays mornings at 11 o'clock, we have the Disciple 2 study that's over in the Drake Room. And we're making apple pies this uh, coming weekend on Friday the 1st and Saturday the 2nd. So don't forget to uh, fill out your little homemade apple pie sheets that are uh, conveniently put in your bulletin. The day is the last day that they're uh, taking orders and uh, taking some money for this. I've already filled mine out and, and put it to the, uh, got it to the appropriate people, so uh, there's no excuse if you miss out on our apple pies. Also on the uh, second at 945, we have the church conference is at Pikes Side West, uh, United Methodist Church right down the road. Uh, we are at 945. We'll be with a bunch of other churches and um, we, we usually with a charge conference, I don't know if you've been to one, it's the majority of the people that show up, it's, it's really open to anybody, uh, usually officers are the ones that, that come, uh, people that are in charge of committees or groups, and uh, we vote on a few things like uh, the nominations uh, package, the uh, ministry packages, and, and that's about all we, we vote on. Uh, we also take reports from all of the different committees, and they have been getting those in uh, regularly. Don't forget, daylight savings time ends next week. Uh, you fall back. You fall back an hour. Um, also, the, we've got uh, chil uh, the children's Christmas play rehearsals. Uh, you see that that's in your bulletin. There's a sign-up sheet in the narthex, and the rehearsals are right after church, uh, beginning next Sunday, the 3rd. So you get the 3rd, the 10th, and the 24th from 11.15 to 12.30, and then a dress rehearsal on Saturday, December the 7th, uh, from 10 to 12. The program is on Sunday, December the 8th at 3 p.m. So those of you that are helping out with that or are starring in that, uh, please, make, please make note of those times. Uh, and also, we need some, um, a little more help for apple pie making. Uh, they're making a bunch of good apple pies uh, to be picked up or to be delivered uh, next weekend. So if you can um, uh, help out, please sign up in the Narthex. There is a sign-up sheet out there that you can put your name on. And in case of emergencies, um, it's, it's a shame that we have to do this, but we need to do this. Just in case uh, something hits, something goes south in this room, uh, something goes south uh, with a tornado or whatnot, uh, we need to know where the medical supplies are, where we need to gather, how we're going to do that. And so there is um, uh, an approval. The trustees and the church council approved a plan, and we are meeting. There's going to be a short training class on November 17th following the worship service. So anybody that's interested in knowing uh, all of this information, please uh, make sure that you sign up, that you let um, any of the trustees know that you're interested in doing this, and uh, we can get all of this on, online on, as fast as we can. Uh, and we also have the live streaming ministry. Don't forget to uh, help David out with that. Um, he's the, right now, he's our only uh, live streamer, and he, uh, he will tell you the right buttons to push and the, the wrong buttons to not push. So uh, please, please do that. Uh, I'll turn this over to, uh, to our liturgist for today, to Miss Lucille, and she will uh, do, lead you through the birthdays and some of the other announcements that we have.
Good morning, everyone. Beautiful day out there. So glad to see everybody here. Uh, the birthdays for this week are Deborah Glenn Hill and Alina Lawn. On the 28th is Bill Hammond and Maya McMillan. The 29th is Vicki Eckhart. And the 30th is Hannah Murphy, Murray Cade. The altar flowers today, which are beautiful, are given to the glory God of God in memory of Terry Alger's birthday by Nancy Alger. So now let us prepare our hearts to worship and celebrate God our Creator with the musical prelude. Please stand and join me in the call of worship. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Praise the Lord and praise the praise, and God's praise is unsearchable. Now we will have our hymn of praise, Wonderful Words of Light.
may be seated. Let us continue with our opening prayer. O God, in mystery and silence, you are present in our lives, bringing new life out of desperation, hope out of despair, growth out of difficulty. We thank you that you do not leave us alone, but labor to make us whole. Help us to perceive your unseen hand in the unfolding of our lives and to attend the gentle guidance of your spirit that we may know the joy you give your people. Amen. Let's continue with our prayer of confession. Would you read along with me? God of grace and glory, we thank you that you judge us not by our perfection of our actions, but by the readiness to live boldly by faith. Help us as individuals and as a congregation to trust you and follow where you lead, that in Christ your name may be glorified in all the earth. Amen. Join me in the prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read, and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. The Episcopal reading today is from Hebrews 7, verses 23 to 28. Furthermore, the former priests were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in office, but he holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able for all time to save those who approach God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was fitting that he should have such a high priest, holy, blameless, undefiled, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. Unlike the other high priest, he has no need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins and then for those of the people. This he did once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints as high priest humans who are subject to weakness, but the word of the oath, which came later than the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. May you be blessed in hearing this word. Thanks be to God. Now we will have our choir anthem. Thank you. 
And now, this morning, we will have the children's message given by Genevieve. Okay, can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay, to talk, today we're talking about a big word, also a very important one. The word is intercession. Have you all heard of intercession? I say it's a big word and not one that we use often. I think that we can help you learn what it means in just a minute. But first I want to tell you that Jesus is our intercession, that he will help us to learn more about what the world means. Now hold this. That's next to me. Okay, I bought a boat. Y'all know what a boat is? You do, yeah. I bet. Yeah. Okay, and a washer and a nut. They all go together when you make them. And that's a nut right there. <laughs> okay, so I bought the, um, the, so you use these when you build chairs or something like that, right? And it holds, it'll hold the, everything in place. Um, you just twist it, you twist this on, and then it'll hold it, right? See how I did that? Okay. So it'll hold something together. Now, if, you're, if you just have the bolt on, sometimes it'll just pull through. Even if it's wood, it'll pull through. So what we do is you put the washer on, and then you put the nut on, right? And then, see, that keeps it from pulling through. So it lasts a lot longer. Now, this is where we're going to pretend. You all like to pretend? I do. <laughs> yeah, okay. So this is where we're going to pretend. If I can find my place, that's where we're going to pretend. <laughs> Let's say the boat, this is the boat, that's going to be God. Okay, the boat is God. And I can believe this one, but the nut is us. The people are the nut. Amen. Amen is right. And the washer is Jesus. Is that, that fun? Is that fun? <laughs> so we just don't belong in the same place. A peanut. A peanut, yeah. So um, our problem is that we have that we're we're sinful, right? And we just don't belong in the same place as the very holy God. God wants us and we want God, but because God is pure and holy, we don't belong together. Jesus is the washer. Jesus comes between God and us, just like the washer is in between the boat and the nut. Jesus makes us fit good with God because Jesus looks, looks because Jesus took away our sins. When he died on the cross, he took our sins away. So even though we're sinners, we can ask forgiveness and what is sin? That's when you do things you're not supposed to do. <laughs> and we all do it. We all do it. And then, you know, but we can go and, and we can tell Jesus to forgive us for those sins. Okay, so we, uh, we fit better because of Jesus, just like the boat and the nut fits together, right? So um, Jesus listens to both of our sides. So this is why Jesus is important to you and to me. He speaks for us and acts for us with God and the Father. Jesus also speaks for God the Father and acts for God the Father. He is the intercession. We pray for God the Father through the name of Jesus, and God gives us forgiveness through his Son, Jesus Christ. So do we understand? Even if, we're, even if we do a sin, we can go to God 
in Jesus and they'll forgive us, right? So let's pray. Can you repeat after me? Dear Heavenly Father, can you, can you repeat this? Thank you for giving us Jesus to listen to your prayers and come to you on our behalf. Yeah, we thank for our food every day, right. Thank you for sending Jesus to cleanse us of our sins. We promise to do better and listen for your guidance in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. What do we say? Real loud. Amen. Now at this time, all the children that want to follow Genevieve can go to Children's Church. That was a great question. What is sin? Our gospel reading this morning comes to us from the gospel according to Mark. This is chapter 10, verses 46 through 52. I'm reading from the um, New International Version. Then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, that is, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the same, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called to the blind man, cheer up on your feet. He's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you, Jesus asked. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our hymn of preparation is number 454 in your hymnals. It is, Open My Eyes That I May See. Let us stand and sing together.
Please be seated. I have a question to start off the day. This is a question I left the Disciple 2 class with the other day, and one that I, I asked my wife the other day, too. The question is, what does the date, October 31st, mean to you? Now, if you answered Halloween, uh, trick-or-treat, ghosts and goblins, witches, and dressing up and uh, lots of candy, you're not alone. That's what most people would say. That's probably what I used to say until I heard of a story of a young monk and his fight against injustice as it was taught by the church at that time. October 31st in the year 1500. And 17 was the day that Martin Luther, a young monk, nailed his 95 theses to the door of the Wittenberg Church and basically began, that's what the birth date is of, the Protestant Reformation. His eyes had been opened. He chose to take a stand, even though it would mean eventual excommunication for him. October the 31st, 1517, was the date of Martin Luther's cry for mercy. The whole issue revolved around an evil, a lie that the Christian church was teaching at that time. It all had to do with the practice of buying and selling indulgences. Now, the church taught that when a person passed away, your soul, that person's soul, didn't automatically go to heaven or that other place below. It hung around in a place called purgatory. And in purgatory, your soul had to work off all of the sins that you had committed while you were alive. Now, to shorten your time in purgatory, the church taught that you could purchase indulgences basically a get-out-of-jail-free card for all of the sins, for this little sin, for that little sin, for another little sin that you had committed. And it wasn't only for you that you could buy these indulgences, but you could buy them for your mother, for your father, for your sister, for your cousin, for your aunt or uncle, anybody who had passed away, for your children, anybody that you didn't want to see in purgatory longer than they needed to be in there, you could buy an indulgence and get them out and get them out faster. Where did the money go? It went to the church. It went to the church and they were building large cathedrals at the time. They were building large cathedrals and the cardinals and the priests were getting the money from these indulgences. Martin Luther exposed this kind of evil and he exposed this kind of lie to the people that called themselves Christian. Now, All Saints Day and church services were held on November the 1st. Whatever day of the week it fell on, that's the day that Christians, thousands of people, would go to church and would attend the church services. So because nobody in the church hierarchy would listen to him, Martin Luther posted his 95 theses, I, I keep calling it that, it's basically 95 reasons against indulgences. He posted them on the church bulletin board, and the church bulletin board was the front door. That's why he nails his arguments onto the front door of the church. First and foremost amongst Luther's arguments was that the Bible taught that Christ died for your sins. First and foremost, Christ was high priest. First and foremost, Christ offered himself as a sacrifice, a living sacrifice for all people, for all time. It was done. It was not something you had to work off. It was not something you had to pay the church for. It was done and sealed. There was no need to buy off sins. Christ already forgave you. All you had to do was ask, and you would receive that forgiveness. For his efforts, Martin Luther was stripped of his monk status. He was excommunicated, kicked out of the church altogether. But many people agreed with him. Many people followed him. 
15, 17, you have to understand that the movable press had just started. The movable type press had just begun at the end of the, of the 1400s. And people were learning how to read. So that those that showed up to the church to read these 95 theses either read them out loud to themselves or they read them to people who hadn't learned all of the words or, or, or couldn't read at all. People were reading. People were understanding. And the first thing off of the printing press was the Gutenberg Bible. People were getting a hold of the Bible and finding out for themselves that Christ had died for their sins. Why were they paying the church indulgences? Why were they purchasing these get-out-of-jail-free cards if they didn't need to, if Christ had already paid that price? From this moment you have the beginning of, like I said, the Protestant Reformation, which is what today is. It's Reformation Sunday. You had the Lutheran Church that followed Luther out of, the, out of his church. You had the Calvinists that followed John Calvin. You had Zwingli in Switzerland. You had eventually the Church of England. And this is important because this is why we're all gathered here today. Out of the Church of England came the Methodist movement. And out of the Methodist movement came the United Methodist Church, which was transplanted, transported into this country. All because one person stood up to expose a lie. All because one person took on an evil that he saw that was affecting lots and lots and thousands upon thousands of people. There was something in the midst that was wrong and one person stood up and said here I stand I can't back up from this position any further now in the time of Jesus in the time of our reading it was not uncommon to see beggars along the side of the road especially outside of the temple or along the road to and from a temple you always had some people that were sitting there begging for alms some of those people were legitimate some of those people were not legitimate. Some of those people were, the vast majority, were, were just people that wanted to, to live off the dole, live off of the alms. But one day in our gospel lesson, as our gospel lesson tells us, the cry of one of these legitimate beggars reached the ears, reached the attention of Jesus the Christ, the son of man, the son of David. Blind Bartimaeus was asked what he wanted, and he replied, he wanted his sight. He just wanted to be able to see. And his sight was immediately restored. I think the two most important parts of that story are that A, blind Bartimaeus had faith, and that B, he immediately followed Jesus. He was restored his sight, and he followed the person that restored his sight. The one who, was, who exposed all and restored a way of looking at things was the one to follow. These two stories, the story of Martin Luther and the story of the blind Bartimaeus, have a common thread. And it's the restoration of looking at the world the way God would have it seen. Without the blindness, without the indulgences, without the lies that invaded so many lives. God wanted people to see freely, to see in the light. Christians everywhere are called to follow that way, that truth, and that light in their life. It's been shown to them by their creator, God. It's been paid for, it's been bought for by the Son of God, who was the only living sacrifice for all sins. This is not living life in a vacuum. God doesn't want us to live life in a vacuum, ignoring the details, grasping on to the evils, to the lies that surround us. But God wants us to walk in God's light, a light that is provided by that generous, all-loving, all-seeing God. We're faced with that very choice today in this country, to bury our heads or to accept, and to accept the lies or to support the people who lie to us. Or we're asked to walk in the light that has been provided by the Lord, to help those in need, to stand up for those who would be hurt and would be hurt more. 
That's what October 31st means to me. It's a day of choice. It's a day of choosing this church or that church. It's a day of choosing this way or that way. October 31st is a way of choice. It wasn't the uh, beginning of a split. Some people think that the Protestant Reformation was the beginning of a split from the churches. The church had already split between the Roman Catholic and the Eastern Orthodox. They had already split in the year 303, 305, and they made it official in the 10 hundreds. Splitting was not the issue. The lie was the issue. Splitting was not the cause of the problem. It was the lying to the people to get their money, to get their indulgences, to get their wealth. We are faced with a choice. We have the choice to go to the past, to live the lie, to bury our head in the sand, or to boldly stand for the truth and to help those who cannot help themselves. To send volunteers in mission to those places that have been wiped out, to be able to provide care and feeding and food for people at Christmas time, to provide presents for children at Christmas. This is what we are called for. We have a choice to embrace the past or to seek the future. Let us turn our thoughts and attention to those people that are listed in our bulletin who are in need of our prayer this day. As listed in your bulletin, we pray for all of the hurricane victims. We pray for our nation. We pray for Candy and for Jan Adams. We pray for Magda Halgish, for David Hammond, for Juanita Jones and Dwayne Peterson, and Candy Schultz. We lift up prayers for Deslin Barber Jr., for Alice Calhoun, for Regina Cole, for Sherry Disney, for Doris Ann Fiddler, for Carolyn, for Rachel, and for Joe Love and family and for Brenda Myers. We also want the Lord to consider Hannah Murray Cade, Jean Connor, Lori Connor, Nancy Cookus, Sam Denier, Holly Foster, George Fritz, Joan Laramie, Doug Luttrell, Lois Paff, Gary Ray, Jean Reed, Lee and Roger Rourke, Bill Stuller, Melissa Utterback, T.J. Utterback, and Dennis Whittington. For all of these and for more, we lift up prayers on their behalf. Are there others from this congregation that you would like to have mentioned this day that you would want to lift up? If you do, yep, raise your hand and use your outdoor voice so we can all hear you. Go ahead. What's your sister's name? Ann Roberts. Did I see another hand back here? Oh. And his name again was? Jeff Palm. Jeff. He was your VIM leader? He was a leader of the entire? He was our construction leader. Wow, okay. Uh, Did I see that? Another hand, Joan. Um, My best friend for the last 50 years, Audrey Smith. Audrey? Any 
others. Oh, in the back, yes. I, I couldn't hear you. So I heard traveling mercies and um, prayers for the shepherd family. Uh, others, did I see another hand? Oh, yes, here. We want to lift up prayers for Judy in the hospital then. Uh, and back here, oh, yep, Suzanne. Yes. Um, prayers for joy for all those that have come out and voted. People are coming out in droves, and it's good to see everybody getting out there yeah. to vote, and uh, it's, been, it's been very good, too. And also for one of the girls that works with me, she had a horrible accident, a drunk driver came down a dual highway the wrong way, hit her head on, and she is, she says, I am so blessed. She got a, um, they had to reconstruct her wrist, and mm -hmm. that's all she got out of it. And what was her name? Her car. I'm her sorry? Name is Debbie. Debbie? Yes. Yes. Don't ever stop praying. <laughs> your, living, your mother's living proof of that. Any others? Oh, got one back here. Her first name was Martha. Margaret. Margaret. Thank you. Let's lift up all of these persons in prayer this day. Let us pray. Dear God in heaven, we lift up these names and these persons for your special attention. We pray for all people everywhere. Where we are corrupt, purify us, and where we are in error, correct us. Where we are amiss, reform us. Where we are in want, provide for us. Where we are divided, reunite us. We pray for those who are ill and in the hospital. We rejoice for those who's, who are in remission, whose prayers have been answered, who you have seen fit to return to our side. For the sake of him who died and rose again, and lives to make intercession for us all, we give you thanks, dear Lord. And we pause in silent prayer as we lift up those names that maybe we were unable to say out loud or, or for others to hear us. For all of these and for more, dear Lord, we lift up our prayers to you. And we say, in the confidence of your children, that prayer which your son taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us stand and share the peace of Christ with one another. You can wave to the choir. Hi, choir. And let's continue our service by sharing our gifts and listening to an offertory. continue with our offertory prayer. Almighty God, giver of every good and perfect gift, teach us to render to you all that we have and all that we are, that we may praise you not with our lips only, but with our whole lives, turning the duties, the sorrows, and the joys of our days into a living sacrifice to you. Through your Savior, Jesus Christ, Amen. Our, our final hymn is number 110. This is a mighty fortress is our God. It was written, by the way, by Martin Luther.
Next Sunday is Fall Back Sunday. Don't forget to reset your clocks. Next Saturday is the Charge Conference down at Pikeside United Methodist Church. And don't forget to order your apple pies that are being baked on Friday and Saturday. And if there are any left over, we can pick those up on Sunday morning. As you go forth this week, don't forget to be on the side of the Lord, to look at the world as the Lord looks at it, to see things through God's eyes. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father God Almighty, and the Spirit, the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you all now and always. Amen.